hi guys you're welcome back to my youtube channel you're welcome to another day of our bible study today is day 23 and we'll be studying isaiah chapter 47 and chapter 48 in today's bible study in chapter 47 we come across the judgment that god pronounces on the people of babylon now at this time we can say that the people of israel were already in exile in babylon of course the people of babylon made them go through so much like humiliation so much insult so much suffering and torment and the sad part is that they did not even have any regard for their old ones they treated both the young and the old with the same humiliation and disregard so they disrespected everyone and you know they did not even respect them or even respect their god and in fact they even went on to even force the people of israel into worshiping their false god they had to put them through so much torment so much threats you know threatening them to worship their false god or they would kill them what we read about daniel Meshach, abadinego and shadrach so that is what the israelites went through at that time so god is rising up now god is finally pronouncing judgment on them now the lord god is saying here yeah, that he's the one that made people to be so powerful yes he's the one that made babylon to be so powerful and he's the one that also made them to take the israelites into exile in order to punish them now but what he did not send them now is for them to now be proud or to be threatening and tormenting the Israelites because they are still his beloved. He didn't throw them away. He just wants to put them through a corrective phase, through a corrective punishment. But the people of Babylon are doing way too much. It's just like giving them a mark and they go a whole mile. So God is very angry with them. And this is what we see in chapter 37. Let's read together. The Lord says, Babylon, come down from your throne and sit in the dust on the ground. You were once like a virgin, a city unconquered, but you are soft and delicate no longer. You are now a slave. Turn the millstone, grind the floor. Off with your veil, strip off your fine clothes. Lift up your skirts to cross the stream. People will see you naked. They will see you humbled and shamed. I will take vengeance and no one will stop me. The Holy God of Israel sets us free. His name is the Lord Almighty. The Lord says to Babylon, Sit in silence and darkness. No more will they call you the Queen of Nations. I was angry with my people. I treated them as no longer mine. I put them in your power and you show them no mercy. Even the aged you treated harshly. You thought you would always be a queen and did not take those things to heart or think how it will all end. Listen to this, you lover of pleasure. You think that you are safe and secure. You claim that you are as great as God, that there is no one else like you. You thought that you would never be a widow or suffer the loss of your children. But in a moment, in a single day, both of these things will happen. In spite of all the magic you use, you will lose your husband and children. God is really angry with them. Yes, of course, the Lord used them to punish the people of Israel, but he didn't ask them to go extra mile. He didn't ask them to start being proud and being arrogant and now trying to place themselves on the same level with God. So God is really angered with this. And he goes on to state that those things that they feel like, has never happened to them because of course they've never had to go through exile they've never had to be conquered by any nation before particularly now god is saying that these things are in a single day is going to raise up nation that would destroy them and that's what we later see about cyprus so everything that the lord says the lord says a thing before it happens and we'll see why that is so in chapter 48 because the lord is particular about giving prophecies about speaking about things that would happen in years to come moving on further in chapter 48 we see that the lord is against selective christianity or false religion let me use that the lord is against false christianity if you are for god be for god be for god with all your hearts stand with him stand firm because the lord cannot be deceived you can deceive yourself you can deceive your fellow man but you cannot deceive god so the lord god is strongly against false christianity i will read this in chapter 48 listen to these people of israel you that are descendant from judah you swear by the name of the lord and claim to worship the god of israel but you don't mean a word you say and yet you are proud to say that you are the citizens of the holy city and that you depend on Israel's God, whose name is the Lord Almighty. Like, this is so plain, this is so clear. The Lord God knows his own. You can't confuse God, you can't deceive God. You claim to swear by the name of the Lord. You claim that you are the descendants of this. You claim to be from the tribe of the Holy Nation. You claim to serve the one and only true God. The Lord knows his own. The Lord knows if you are deceiving yourself or you are true to him. So this thing about false Christianity or selective Christianity, you only carry Christianity, you only stay true to, to Christianity when it favors you. But when you see something that doesn't favor you or that doesn't appeal to you, 
you won't do that one or you won't abide by that one. So God is strongly against this. Now we go on to see the reason that God gives for always giving prophecies, for always predicting things before it happens. He has a valid reason for that. And we see this in verse 3 of chapter 48. Let's read. The Lord says to Israel, Long ago I predicted what would happen. Then suddenly I make it happen. I knew that you would prove to be stubborn as rigid as iron and unyielding as bronze. And so I predicted your future long ago, announcing events before they even take place to prevent you from claiming that your idols and images made them happen. Now listen to that. To prevent you from claiming that your idols and images made them happen. All I foretold has now taken place. You have to admit that my predictions were right. Now I will go on to tell you of new things to come, events that I did not reveal before. Only now am I making them happen. Nothing like this took place in the past. If it had, you would claim that you knew all about it. Now the Lord gives prophecies. He gives prophecies to man. He gives prophecies years before these things are going to happen to man. So avoid any man coming to say that, oh, it was your reading of the stars. Or it was your God, your small God, your carved God that revealed it to you. The Lord is always on top. He's the creator, he's the potter. So we cannot outshine, we cannot, we cannot take the glory that belongs to God. We cannot take the glory and the praise that belongs to God. The Lord God always gives prophecies, he always sends messages of things that has never happened before. So that when it finally happens, we will realize how great the Lord is. And if you have been doubting, if you have been wavering before, you will come to realize the might and the greatness of God. So this is the reason why God always gives prophecies because you know they had people, you know they had human beings start saying, oh, I've seen this one before now. Oh, I know it now. I know it. So things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, mouth has not spoken. That is what the Lord God reveals and he brings it into reality. Now we go on to read something very interesting in verse 9. In order that people will praise my name, I am holding my anger to check. I am keeping it back and I will not destroy you. I have tested you in the fire of suffering, as silver is refined in a furnace, but I have found that you are worthless. What I do is done for my own sake. I will not let my name be dishonored or let anyone else share the glory that would be mine and mine alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, because see, if God is to follow our individual actions, if God is to follow us step by step of everything that we do, like none of us will stand, none of us will remain. Because we are so provocative, like we are so audacious in our sins, in our rebellion. But here now the Lord is saying that he has to keep his anger in check, not because of anybody, but because of himself. He cannot share his praise with anyone. So yeah, he's stating it clearly that all these things, all these, um, all these, the Lord is slow to anger, the Lord is patient, the Lord is merciful. He's doing it because he has to stay true to his name. Of course, our God is a good God, but we humans, we can push, the way we push our fellow human into destruction. It's the way we constantly push God to the edge with our rebellion and our sinful ways. But God cannot be man and he cannot be controlled by our actions. That's why in spite of all the sinful things, there are some people that you'll be like, oh, this person, person, the person deserved, like God, why now you should have, God is not doing it for anybody, he's doing it for himself. So that his name will be praised. He has to be patient. And remember that Jesus Christ usually says this very common saying, whenever he gives a parable that heaven rejoices over one sinner that is repentant. He is patient with us. He's not taking a thing to, you know, just destroy everything, but he has to do it for his glory. But still, it doesn't mean that we should go on pushing, that we should go on being audacious. It is one thing for you to be rebellious and to be contrite and to be remorseful. It is another for you to be rebellious and for you to have the audacity. A word is enough. We'll go on further to see more about the nature of God. And if there is one thing that has stood out for me in our Bible study from the beginning of our Bible study up until now to Isaiah 48, is that I love the book of Isaiah so much because it has given me a better picture. It has given me a better knowledge and understanding into the nature of God, into how God operates. It has made me to have a bigger picture and it has enabled me to magnify God more because God is great. See, God does not need us to magnify him. Is great already so if I was thinking that my God is like this before now I know that my God is like so I love this because yeah we get to see so much descriptions so much about the way God operates so much about the thoughts of God so much about what God requires from us so much about what God does not even place importance on that we humans we feel it is the Almighty or it is the ultimate in our Christian journey there is an interesting verse I want us to 
take a look at that's verse 18 if only you had listened to my commands then blessings would have flowed for you like a stream that never goes dry victory would have come to you like the waves that roll on the shore your descendants would be as numerous as grains of sand and i would have made sure they were never destroyed now <laughs> yeah it is what it is if only if only it is funny how we don't want to live by these things it's funny how we want to be selective of the parts of god's words to abide by but we want to only receive all of our father abraham's blessings it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way if we would not be as devoted as faithful as father abraham was when god told him to leave everything and go into the land i would show you he didn't hesitate he went when god told him to go and sacrifice your son he didn't hesitate. He took his son and was about to do that. If only we can be. If only. It is stated here plainly. If only you had listened to my commands. If only you had been faithful. If only you had been loyal. Then all of these things. If now you can see the blessings of Father Abraham. Even if he didn't come, you know, in the way our human mind would be. Because he became a father of nation. And like he was 99. And he became a father. It doesn't need to make sense. Because God's wisdom cannot... Be comprehended by our human minds so it doesn't need to make sense but what god requires of us what god always and the only thing he requires from us is loyalty loyalty of, of our hearts not of you know of superficial things that you need to please you need to prove to people no in christianity it is an individual journey you look up to your god and that is why you don't get discouraged or deterred by what you see around you if you see your pastor your mentor or that elder in church misbehaving you don't lose faith in God. You don't you don't take a step back because of those people. Because your eyes were not even focused on them in the initial time. Your eyes were focused on God and on Him alone. Christianity is an individual race. And if there's one thing we need to know, one thing that God requires from us is loyalty and faithfulness. That is all that God requires from us. Search your heart. Let your heart be in sync with the heart of God. Remember David, the man that's the only man that has been described as the man being after God's own heart. You would say, oh, he was sinful. Yes, he was sinful, but he was after God's own heart. Because in spite of all, he was loyal to God. He was faithful to God. Now, you being loyal, you being faithful, doesn't mean that you won't make a mistake and you won't, you know, err. But when you make mistakes, you will be loyal enough to know that, oh, I have disappointed my master. No, I need to make amends. My master, very so immediately, you don't need to, you know, say, eh, 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 after all. That is one thing that God requires from us today, our loyalty. And I pray, I pray that in all we do in our lives, that we'll be very loyal to God and be faithful. I pray for God's grace upon our lives, that our actions, our words, our thoughts would reflect loyalty to Him alone. And that our hearts will long to be in sync with Him all the days of our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for joining today's Bible study. I hope you've been blessed by today's Bible study. Please let me know what you think about our study today in the comment section. And also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've not done so. Give this video a thumbs up and share to your Christian brethren also. So that they can be blessed, you know, and get to grow more in their Christian faith. Tomorrow's Bible study will be on Isaiah chapter 49 and chapter 50. And I would also want to see you. I would love to see you in tomorrow's Bible study. Until tomorrow, bye for now.